Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this beautiful desert scene from a photograph that I found on Pixabay. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold press paper. It's taped to my board. My board's at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees um, and I'm going to be painting a fairly flat wash for the sky. I'm using my large bamboo Chinese Haki brush and cerulean blue and I'm sweeping it across the page trying to get a fairly even rich blue sky. I think I'm using a little bit too much water here and it doesn't help that my board is at an angle. I think to get this wash really nice and flat if you wanted to do it you would be better off I think painting it only at a very slight slope or, or even flat but um, I, shall, I can't film flat so that's why I, I always paint at an angle but I'll try and even it up a little bit by tilting the board around various angles and allowing the paint just to sort of run down and run back uh, across the page just to even up the wash a bit. If I turn it upside down that should just bring it up flat now. Now that looks okay, so now I'm just going to dry it flat and then come back and put the desert in. It's dry and um, it didn't go quite to plan. I've got a bit of a gap of paler sky on the left hand side, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to press on and hopefully it'll be okay. I can probably crop that bit off if I, if I want to. If you're going to paint along, um, try and get your uh, wash to be a lot more even and flatter for that lovely desert sky look. I'm just checking that my tape is nice and um, affixed to the paper. And now I'm going to just paint in, start painting in some lines of distant hills. I'm using my three quarter inch flat brush and just a very pale mix of cerulean blue and a bit of raw sienna. Um, I'm just a bit of burnt sienna in there too, to gray it down. And I just want a very simple line of hills to start with. Back to the Harky brush, which has got a nice chiseled edge and I'm just going to pull across some raw sienna for the distant desert. Keeping the lines nice, nice and horizontal and quite narrow, and bringing it across as well, up a little bit higher, just to add a bit of colour variation and depth and distance to sort of foothills and mountains in the distance in the desert photograph. Now I'm going to paint in the rest of the desert just very quickly and loosely using um, yellow ochre which is brighter than raw sienna and it will give me a richer sort of um, foreground and I'm going to pull in a little bit of I think sepia as well um, here and there into the foreground just for some shadow. I'm going to try and keep some dry brush areas and some slightly different tones and textures here and there um, just to add to that sort of bland but beautiful flat texture of this desert. Again keeping my brush strokes sort of horizontal which adds to that kind of the look of the flat plane. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is while the paint's still wet is I'm taking a stiff bristle brush I'm going to splash in or spatter in some drops of water which will push the paint away in, in areas to, and add texture. And I'm going to do the same with the sepia and just flick that across the bottom area of the, for, the sort of foreground area of the painting and just allow that to disperse and soften a bit um, across the foreground again for added texture. Just a nice loose look without being too fussy. And while it's still wet, I'm just going to gently soften with, with a flat brush some of those spots. Just pull them across again with horizontal brush strokes um, just to um, soften and blur them out a bit. I'm 
I'm just going to um, clean out the flat brush and dry it off so it's just damp. I'm going to use the flat brush just to bring some, to lift out some very fine lines right in the far distance, horizontal lines. Again, just to add to that look of distance and layering and light, the bright desert sunlight reflecting off the sand in the distance. And now I'm just going to leave it to dry completely before I go on to the next stage. It's now completely dry, so I'm just going to put in that um, in in the photograph. There's a sort of a a sort of fairly pointed mountain. Um, it's got quite a sort of a a prominent peak in the sort of um, in the distance, but towards the front of the distance if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to use the flat brush to get the shape of that in. Um, I want it coming up very slightly above the hills that are already behind it. So I'm going to work that in. And then behind it I will put another even further distant higher mountain. Just using the small calligraphy brush now just to ease the peak up just a little tiny bit higher. Using the same mixture of paint, I'm going to take my ruler and just use it as a guide and drag the same paint along with the flat brush uh, just to bring along that line of slightly closer distant foothills. It's easier to use the ruler as the guide to get a nice straight and very narrow line but be careful when you lift the ruler off because you don't want to smudge the paint. Now I think that's okay. Um, I'm just will be putting in a higher, very distant, flat mountain across the back, but I've got to wait for this peak to dry. But before it dries, I can just maybe dab out a little bit of paint here and there and put in a bit of texture with the flat brush by sort of moving the paint around and lifting just a few slopes into that hill. They should just diffuse out softly and just give me a bit more texture there. And now let that dry completely. And it's totally dry, so now a very watery mixture of the blue and the brown. And just using my small Pro Art Harky brush, just going to bring along that very faint line of distant mountains. And that's it, that's the background finished. I'm just going to leave everything and make sure it's all completely dry. And then I'm going to just paint the, the tree in. Um, this interesting shaped desert tree. Now I've painted roughly in just where I want the trunk and just where I want the main branches, um, as you can see there. Now I'm going to mix up a mixture of yellow ochre and sepia onto a medium size um, calligraphy brush. And I'm going to use that to paint in the trunk and the main branches. It's just a matter of painting in the areas that I've already penciled in here. So I'm just going to take my time and make sure that I get the branches sort of thin enough and in the right place just by using the point of the calligraphy brush and painting carefully. I'm trying to keep the branches ending up sort of in quite a sort of flat horizontal orientation because this tree is has a very distinctive shape, um, a very flat topped shape and I'm trying to uh, show that in the position of my branches here. Now I'm just mixing up some Payne's Grey and I think there's a bit of sepia in it. 
and I'm going to paint over these branches carefully with this much darker colour because if you look back to the reference photograph uh, the branches are in deep shade caused by the canopy of the tree from about where the branches begin to grow in the trunk and then up to the canopy so I'm painting these much much darker than the tree trunk itself which has a lot of reflected light on it. looks a bit funny at the moment but hopefully it'll all come together when the rest of the tree is in. I'm just going to take a bit more of the same dark mixture and just going to run it down along the the left side of the trunk where it's in deep shadow too. And now it's time to paint in the tree canopy and I'm using my Perylene Green, it's a Winsor & Newton artist quality paint and it's, it's a lovely colour and it'll do the job nicely because it's a nice rich green and if I use a little bit of yellow ochre dropped into it a bit later I should get quite a, a nice rich effect. I'm using my small calligraphy brush and again because it's got a nice point and it holds a lot of paint so I can use sort of these scribbling motions to build up these fairly flat almost umbrella shaped canopies over the branches that I've painted in. I can dip into darker paint here and there just to add shadow in certain places. Um, a bit later as I said I'll add some yellow ochre into it which should colour mix on the page to give me a nice variety of hues and shades and maybe some little sunlit areas on the tree. I can add more water to the paint if I want it to be paler in places and dip into richer, uh, drier paint and drop that in for the darker areas. In goes the yellow ochre. It's all wet so the yellow ochre will run nicely down and diffuse gently into the, the green paint. Just give a nice soft effect in places. I'm going to take my time with this, building it up slowly uh, but surely and trying to leave a few areas of unpainted paper so the sky kind of comes through so it's not just a solid mass. I want it to be mostly solid but I do want some less solid areas just the, sort of so the light in the sky can just shine through a little bit. I can just use the point of the brush as well, just to sort of dot around on the edge, just to add a bit of variety and some slightly looser strands or, or, or branches of leaves and twigs coming around near the top, around the edges. Just a little bit more of the yellow ochre, just dotted here and there. I think it brings the tree together nicely with the colour of the desert, but also gives that nice sort of sunlit look to the tree canopy. And now adding a few more darks, just dotting in here and there. I'm just adjusting as I go. There's a two-part tutorial for this 
um, desert scene on Patreon if anybody's interested, um, where this is uh, painted, every brush stroke is, is shown and I explain a lot more about my techniques and thoughts as I paint. Um, so follow the link and take a look. But please bear in mind, if you feel like joining us on Patreon, you will be charged now. But then again, you'll be charged on the first of the month. So it might be best if you want to join us to wait until the beginning of February. And then you'll only be charged once for the month. Now I'm nearly there. I think I've just about built up a nice balance of lights and darks, greens and yellows. And so I'm just going to go back in with the rigger now and put in some of the smaller branches linking and twigs linking those main branches up into the canopy. I'm just trying to get some nice fine twigs right up close to the canopy. I think that looks about okay. That's about as much as I want to do for that. I think the next thing is to paint in that very thin shadow that runs below the tree, caused by the sun being almost directly overhead, but just to the right. It throws that shadow behind the tree, um, right across the left. I'm trying to keep that shadow nice and narrow like it is in the photograph which I think adds to this the really sort of hot um, midday sun effect of this desert. Now finally I'm going to strengthen up the dark shadow line running down the edge on the left of the tree trunk and I'm going to darken up the branches that are in the shadow, the deep shadow created by the canopy of the tree. It just makes that tree stand out an awful lot more and emphasises the way the light is working with the shadows in this scene. So here's the finished painting. Um, let's peel the tape off, pulling it away from the painting so it doesn't um, run the risk of tearing into the painting if it's stuck a bit hard on the paper um, and see how it looks with a nice white border. Well, I think that looks okay. Um, even despite the fact that I didn't get my sky wash quite right, I still think it looks all right and I can always just crop that paler area out if I want to. Um, but I like the effect that I've got with the layers creating the distant hills, the foothills and the mountains. The texture on the desert, I think, the stony barren ground is very loosely implied with the way it's been painted with the dry brush. I'm just going to put a little bit more dark just up there into that very light bit just to link those dark shadows across the tree a bit more. And that's that done. So thanks very much for watching. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already and thanks so much to my lovely patrons on Patreon who support this channel. I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.